Mr. Lasit Fernando. Mr. Laru. Welcome, welcome to the Jaiwes podcast. Thank you for having me. Uh, so before we start, yeah. I mean, obviously, I know who you are. Millions of followers and the viewers that I have. Could you at least a laugh? Who should like that? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, no. We could be watching this in five years, and then in five years, yeah. Oh my God. No, three years. Okay. Three years. Okay, okay. Chief, I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean, dreams unborn. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll let me adjust your mic. It's usually set to the girl's settings because they're slightly co- not because I'm a sexist. <laughs> it's just girls are a lot more sweet and quiet. Okay. <laughs> I can be sweet. Yeah. Okay, so for the ten viewers to ten to one hundred <laughs> viewers, at least within the first few days, tell me or explain to me. Still us. who you are and what you do uh so i'm a musician mm. uh currently <laughs> out of work <laughs> musician yeah. sadly but uh yeah so that's what i do pretty much yeah yeah i was wondering cuz uh, like covid time i was wondering why i ran into you in at that uh, sex pub yeah that's you uh, doing that's jiggle all time job <laughs> cuz I, 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 <laughs> i don't know if i'm going to keep that <laughs> my the parents who watch this as well um, okay so, i was just bart and right, but you right. came there to work <laughs> <laughs> okay so just to give a little context uh, to the history i think you were uh, one of my first band leaders <laughs> <laughs> oh god not one of my first one of my first band leaders right like a musician right, right, right. um cuz i think before that Uh, I've been in like you know bands where you know I formed with a couple of friends and there was no really structure to anything like that. I kind of nicked you from another band, no? Was it with Rage first before us? No, no, no. Was it the other way around? It was the other way around. Ah, Ravin nicked you from us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ravin tried to nick you. Ravin, if you're watching this, <laughs> I'm watching you, man. Because <laughs> I think I mentioned it as well. I think he because he because I he was also really kind of annoyed as to why I wasn't. Ah yes, I remember. Uh, I remember. Um, and you, fucker! I remember once we did this plan, this like whole big photo shoot thing. Do you remember with AOD? I think so. With the AOD students, we planned like oh, huge yeah. photo shoot and got like a setup and like yeah. costumes and everything. And then that day Wait, morning, was you, I in the back? Was I in? No, I was not. You like this was at the start, oh, like okay. the first two months. Okay. And then I booted the bus. Yeah, yeah. And then you call me in the morning. You're like, "Come on, son, I'm at Ravin's place." Oh Ravin's shit! Age Patrice, and shit. I can't come. And I'm like, "What?" Okay, now I'm confused whether it was Ravin who I joined first or whether it's you who I joined. No, no. I'm pretty sure I was with you for a while because that I was explaining to Ravin in that uh, conversation as well. The reason I you know stuck to Angel Dawn and stuff is because we were like making money at that. We were, you we mean, were like kind of, you yeah. know, f- uh, for that level of a band. Like, yeah, exactly. Money, like yeah. we didn't have, to, I didn't have to. Yeah, that's why you know I was intrigued to have this conversation with you, because for a rock band, because I played for shape like a little few bands here and there. That's so you were the first one who actually covered all our strings, covered all right, our right. Um, studio practice uh, costs, and you had figured out ways with. I the I think Bernard and you know there is different <laughs> people <laughs> how to navigate around that and I think I remember telling Ravin as well you know that's why I was I said you know okay I'm still part time range but my band is Angel Down even right, right. Uh, no no yeah uh, I think Angel Down was just because I remember yeah. uh, Pitigala was the one who uh, exactly he was drumming and I I was, was never in the band when Pitigala was drumming I was I was no. The reason I want to, you know, have a conversation because I've been doing this with everybody who sat in for this conversation. There's, you know, backtracking to where you deviated from the norm, right? Because right, we right, all, right. okay, um, we all have this, even including me, my parents. We all grow up with the doctor, lawyer, engineer plan, right? Yeah. So at some point, you know, we get introduced to various things, and then we decide that, you know, we have different paths. So let's, you know, backtrack all the way to. O levels, A levels, because you are a Wesleyite, right? Yes. You, yes. Uh, you, which batch? So I was two thousand two thousand and eight A levels. Okay, A levels. And what stream were you following? I did maths, man. Right. And which what is weird was... because like, okay, uh, like I don't mean this in a pandita way, right. but I was pretty good in school until yeah, like yeah. O levels. Okay. Like, I remember because uh, I I I I could yeah. process things and absorb things pretty fast. Okay. Like all those I found pretty easy. I only studied right. like about two weeks, and I got like 
bunch of A's and stuff. Right. So much potential thrown away on music. On music, man. Oh, oh my god. Waste of a life. Thirty yeah. years old now, like you know. That's definitely <laughs> what my parents are probably going through. I, mean, I don't know if your parents have accepted this, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure our parents are like taking notes right now. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so sorry, I keep going. Yeah, so like, uh, so A-levels was easy, and I thought, mm. oh, okay, if I manage this easily, mm. A-levels should be pretty cool, also. Oh, yeah. But then this, a couple of weird things happened. Like, um, so it, usually after A-levels and A-levels mm. in the local schools, mm. you get a bit pretty gap, no? Yeah. Three months or yeah. four months off, okay? It's six months. Six yeah. months, yeah, maybe. Yeah. To come back. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I was like fucking excited for this time, like you know, play some music, mm. blah blah blah. But then our headmaster at the time, uh, weird character. He decided no, we are going to start school straight away. Oh, like well, within on, a month. On pending results. On pending results. Okay. Within a month or whatever, we are going to start killer. Like no break. And then I was like, fuck that shit, man. I'm not going to go back. Right. Like I deserve this break. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Killer, mama hit ya. I stayed six months. Because we actually, I mean, for people who go to local school, that's like a huge. That's like the break we are all you know waiting for. Because you know. Uh, that's uh, the first break we exactly, get. Exactly. Like, yeah. Fucking what? Did you have any older sister, older brothers or sisters? No. Or you are the oldest. Just, yeah, so when when we when I heard that my my sister is going on a break for like six months, I was like, yes. That's the dream. I can't <laughs> imagine that was stolen away from you. No, no. I, so I I thought to myself like, I think myself and a couple of other people we were like, no, fuck that shit. We, right. we are going to take a break. Okay. Uh, so after like six months, I went and joined, joined back for eleven classes. Mm. And man, these guys had gone so bloody far. Oh, so you had the option to like not join? Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, they couldn't force us to come. Oh, okay. But he made it clear that he wants everyone to come and that right, he's right. going to start work. Okay, okay. Like they're going to start the classes and right, whatever. Me, right, right, right. Yeah, that's like that's losing chemistry class and stuff. I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Like right. literally, I've never, I have never felt that pain in school. Mm, okay. We have like been listening to the teacher and been like, right. what is he talking about? Yeah. And then during that point, like for about a year, I struggled. I tried to catch up, and because I have this thing also, I don't like to like. Give up yeah. easily yeah. also. Yeah. So went for these tuition classes and stuff yeah. and all that. And uh, I bet uh, during that process, when I clicked, you know, I was just like, "Fuck, this is not making me happy at all." Yeah. Like putting because usually sometimes when you're putting in work for something that you like and love, mm. it still feels good exactly. it, even if yeah. it's starting. Yeah. But this I was just like, man, man, this feels like such a drag. And yeah. the tuition classes were like fucking six, seven hours long at some, one right, point. Right, right. And during that. Time I started to get an idea that this is not really for me. Okay, right. But yeah. I knew that subconsciously, but I didn't know what else mm, to do. To do mm. what? Or what is there yeah. anything that else that I could do? Kira? Right. Before we do move on, there's something that you said that I I we really want to go back. You said that you were anxious to start doing music during that break. So yeah, music, music started. Music, name, also like not okay. just music, like because I I think I had bought a guitar. Maybe a year or two okay. before. Where did that start from? You, you. That started like completely by chance. Ah, no, actually, what happened was so before music, like I used to play football in school. Okay. And that was like a big thing for me. Like I used to literally go to school some days because I, so I can go to practice right, afterwards. Right, right. And that was a lot of fun for okay, me. Okay. Okay. And then I met with this like motorbike accident while doing a school project, and oh, then shit. I couldn't. Yeah. Which grade was this? So this was uh, just after O levels, I think. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I was 16 or something. Yeah, 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 so we yeah. we did this big concert with the Intrac Club and mm. um, this big Bharti Santosh concert, blah blah blah, right, at BMICH. Right. And I uh, met with a motorbike accident okay. the day before the concert. Okay. And then uh, so for a year I couldn't play football. Right. And then I was like wondering what the fuck do I do yeah. now? And like honest to God, I thought okay I'll buy a guitar. It'll look cool. Right. <laughs> 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 At that age, yeah. like, or like, honest to that yeah. is that was it. So I bought I mean, a guitar, yeah. and I I think I went to one of my friend's brothers to get a few lessons. Right. And we, around that time, like, I couldn't play for sh- jack shit. Like, I right. remember nothing. Mukhtar, nothing else matters. Right. No, another. When you say nothing at all, but the <laughs> band, like that level of band, right? Right, 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 right? So my friends at school, they were starting up a band, and they were like, they knew I had got a guitar. Right. Yeah, but my guitar gun blown the killer. Right. I was like, yes, I can <laughs> give me like two weeks. Right, okay. So I gave gave myself a bit of a crash course, and right. I went for the first practice. I was still bad. Right, right, like I could, right. I can still remember their faces when I went to that practice and I was playing. And I was just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible, bro. Like I can still remember their faces, like looking at each other, like oh, what did shit. we do and like what have you got ourselves into, guy? Kind of. Oh my god! But then I kind of suck at it. I right, put right, some right. work in. Yeah, and. Um, 
So yeah, that's how music mm-hmm. started. Right. But even then, because I think because I never had a musical reference point mm. in a family or friend. Okay. With a family or friend, mm. because none of my family they are music lovers, but there wasn't any musicians in okay. my family. Right. Even in the extended family. Yeah. And even out of my friends, there wasn't anyone who I knew was doing music mm. or planning to do music. So I had no reference point of. Where I would like want to go with music yeah, 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 or yeah, yeah. how I would get there, so you're nothing. Still floating in this. Still time. floating around. Mm-hmm. Like what about your parents? What were they? What were their assumptions for you? Like what did they think you were gonna do? Did they have anything in their mind, or were they just just letting you do your own thing? Yeah, to be to to their credit, they kind of gave me the freedom of deciding mm. what I want to do. Okay. Like I think my dad's biggest thing was like as long as you're making an honest living, mm. that's all that matters. Right, right, right. And for my mom, it was just like as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Okay. I remember for my like extended family with my uh, so I grew up away from my parents since okay. I was uh, like a kid. Okay. So I grew up mostly with my grandparents and aunt. Right, right, right. And they had a bit more of a traditional view of what mm. you should do for work. And my aunt was all like, you know, like you should become an engineer, yeah, yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah. So I got tipped away. Yeah. I was like thinking, okay, maybe okay, maybe that's what I have to do. Yeah. So like with during A levels and finding music, it was a very floaty period of like on one hand knowing that. School isn't for me, and mm. this is not gonna be my life. Right. But then, on the other hand, not knowing, okay, then if not, what? Yeah. Kela. Okay. So it took me a few years to like gather up the confidence to say that okay, I want to do music. Right. Who did you speak to? Oh, where did when when did you voice it out? Because I remember for me, it was all you know, engineering was the thing, right? You know, mm. like until even I started my engineering, music was I'm gonna try as hard as I can if it. Happens as plan B, right? Then that's right. what my parents are thinking until I quit engineering. Yeah, yeah. So it was quite into the whole. Yeah, well, yeah, you yeah know, exactly. You're pretty deep into the degree now. Yeah, by exactly. the time you quit. I mean, yeah, I started my first year and I was failing epically because I could. Yeah. It wasn't my wing. What about for you? Like, at what point did you tell your parents that? Hmm. Uh, I I don't think there was like a like a moment. I think yes. it happened gradually, right? Yeah, because like for example. The I think when I first knew that music made me happy mm-hmm. and made me feel fulfilled yeah. was we, when we started playing some gigs with the school band yeah. that we started up. Yeah. And then I, I really liked the feeling of being yeah. on stage and like you know being able to put out emotion and yeah. seeing people receive that emotion yeah. and seeing that connection like that really touched me in a place that has ha, that I hadn't felt before right. in life. Like because I've I've done stuff yeah. but nothing had really moved me like that. Yeah. But this moved me, and I was like, "Oh fuck, this feels really good. Yeah. It feels right." This But is the band that you, they were like, they were not sure. That was shit. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Okay. I mean, right. yeah. By that time, I was okay. Mm. I'd got to a point where I could play like okay. when you say nothing at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. so it took a few years. Like on one hand, I was trying to find the confidence, like because I felt like I, I wasn't the most natural talented bugger. Mm. Yeah. But the one thing I had going on for me was. I thought, okay, I might not be the most talented, but I'll work thirty percent right. harder than the bugger next to me. Right. So because right. of that, I managed to play catch up a bit, right. and still, like about three, four years, I was like fluctuating between states of like, wow, I really love doing this, but mm. oh shit, am I good enough? And right. fuck, do I have enough time to get yeah. good enough? Then oh my, Adi, like we started the metal bands and mm. stuff. Where did the metal scene come in? Because. Because I'm when you start on music, you said when you play nothing, uh, when you say nothing at all, that's clearly yeah. not metal. Yeah, yeah. But uh, at what point did you hear a metal band, or do you remember the point when you so discovered? So that started with the school band itself, like okay. because that at that time we were listening to a lot of like stuff like Nirvana, oh, okay. System of right. Down, like mm. that was metal to us. That that was as heavy as it yeah. was to us right. back yeah. then. So like the la, like the. Tastes for that musically came from a pretty early stage, mm, okay. and I think also like a lot of us were in very like tense family mm. situations and tense situations in life. Right. So it resonated a lot. Right. Yes. Metal. Okay. Interesting. At what point did you think about like money and the music and work and making a living, or was that aspect also in your head all the time? Or um, okay. So to be honest, while we were doing the metal thing. Mm. I never really had a like a big belief that we could make money off it. Right. To be completely honest. Okay. Like at that point. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Like the the only thing I wanted to do was make enough 
so that we could like shape it and keep it going right you know like mm. like you said earlier like pay for our own strings right, and transport right, right. Yeah. like that was what i was worried about mm. uh i started thinking about seriously making money from this like making a living mm. from this once i started playing as a solo act right so like i think uh, some time towards the end of the metal days i used to go and like jam at open mics right, and right, stuff right, right, right. at uh, right. you know on the green with sam and then right and then during that time i think i got my first gig at in on the green when sam mm. went abroad right. for like a few months right, 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 he was right. like can you cover yeah and then i thought oh shit maybe i i can mm-hmm. earn a living from this skill right so that's when i slowly started to become like a full time mm. musician interesting so i mean just before we speak about all the the, the spiel that comes with being a full time musician and a solo artist cuz i remember back then um the reason like one of the main things that i was you know amazed about with your thinking is you always had this structured or like business like view to a band right like right, right, um right. cuz whenever i speak to other people uh, you kind of knew that we was thinking along that sense what i thought you know that we was uh, trying to figure out is this going to make sense and that's why uh, what was how did that come to because i remember doing four three or four concerts and we were paying all the bands at yes, least a were, tiny yeah. amount and yeah, yeah, yeah. and back then a metal band and a rock band just i mean getting like not like the elites at that point yeah. the elites they were no, like especially for a young band no? because exactly, yeah. because most of the bands that were starting we were all like you know getting into the scene it's not like mm. we had like a massive following and then there was a whole st- strategy behind getting bars uh, involved and you know like you know, giving some making it more attractive to them in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the side of sales where did all that start because i because at this point you and i we were both done or you had done, you were done with your degree right yes um, i think so because we are we both in business degree, which i'll get back to in a bit as well um where did that thought process come through i think uh, to be honest i i i can't like point out mm-hmm. point in time and say i thought of it and planned right. this way right. but i think what happened was like so when i was first getting into the metal scene i used to hang out with a lot of the the more senior bands right like the boys from Stig and right. like yeah. those guys and one thing i noticed was like there was a lot of uh, personal changes in bands mm-hmm. because boys could keep up with the financial right, right, uh, right. like you know commitments to themselves mm-hmm. like in the sense they weren't getting like paid from right. gigs and stuff and then mm-hmm. like they were thinking we should we need to make money mm-hmm. so boys would leave bands and right. like you know yeah. and then like i think i kind of had this idea that if you're doing a band we need to at least cover some basic costs break even, or break like even at least right. where baga doesn't feel like he's paying out of his pocket to pay music right, right. yeah like, so i think yeah. that's where it kind of came from okay and right, what about because you and i we went to nc to do uh, why did you feel like that was important for you to you know cover that base if you know me that to be honest was on like uh, like that i kind of did to balance the family right. side of it also yeah. because uh, I mean I remember you did have a little bit of pressure from yes uh, I guess uh, yeah yeah like I mean because after A levels like my results weren't that great mm-hmm. and then like I knew I'm not going to go to university here for sure like uh, what do you call it mm-hmm. government university right. and then I think uh, even my family were like saying like you know get a degree mm-hmm. even if you're thinking of doing music like you know it would be good to have a fall back right, right, right. which I didn't really want to be honest like because yeah. I I kind of don't like having plan Bs mm-hmm. in a way because right. I feel like if you know that that net is there you don't leave because i hear that a lot yeah I, i do hear that a lot seeing the people when they have a plan b in their mind they are more comfortable for exactly that. like i think so like because if 99% of people say no have a plan b must mm-hmm. in case things go wrong right. but I, i i don't know if this is right to think this way yeah. but i feel like when you're back to the wall and you have no option out mm-hmm. you put 110% into whatever you want right. to do right exactly because when you have the safety net you know mm. mokakari unat even subconsciously you know monari avlagya yeah you can fall back under that okay that's a very interesting conversation because because you and i are pretty much in the same wavelength and this this is the reason i also did my degree was because it was going to be a plan b yeah how much of a plan b is it actually can you actually fall back because i know that okay i'm i have that i have a piece of paper yeah <laughs> but because you know i've gone so deep into this plan a yeah yeah and followed all these other avenues 
is that actually a plan b anymore cuz it's just not really bro. Right. like to be honest right now it's literally a piece of paper mm. where i don't even know where it is now <laughs> to be honest <laughs> like the funny part was yeah. i think i finished my degree in 2012 yeah. graduated in 2012 or 13 mm. or something okay I didn't even bother going and getting the degree or something like right. the piece of paper right? Right, 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 right and then I think in 2017 I was going to Aussie and uh, something they needed my degree right. I was like oh shit I don't have the degree and so I go to ANC and I go to the re- registration office and I'm like uh, I'm here to pick up my degree right. thing and uh, she was like ah, okay and uh, she starts typing and then she's like uh, when did you graduate <laughs> I'm like 2012 <laughs> Uh, yeah i mean i'm uh, not that i like i don't really regret the time spent there because yeah. it was kind of fun i met some nice people right, right, right. and stuff like that but uh, yeah I, like i don't see myself stopping music now and using my degree now cuz cuz anyway. i mean cuz obviously the reason i asked that question is now you know we are in a place where you know covid has happened and things are pretty tough you know like, a lot of people and that apparently the plan b that we had is really not serving any purpose right, now, right yeah now, yeah it's, it's not like okay you know what what when the economic crisis let me go back to plan b and take that out and like you cuz cuz there's a lot of um, cuz you dedicate a lot of time to get to where you are right now that's going yes. back to the beginning again as well yeah. right interesting so why did like bands stop being appealing to you because of bugs are cute <laughs> <laughs> I was a little afraid to ask this question. <laughs> no, 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 but it's true. Because the reason I ask this question is because I know exactly how you feel. Um, because uh, at what point I went through it a little bit, and then I got discouraged, right? So like, yeah. what about for you? You know, like, because I know it's a people problem. It's a it is. It uh, is. Yeah. It's so, it's a people and wavelengths problem, mm, or something. Right. This thing is for me. Um, like when I do something, I like doing it hundred percent. Right. Or not at all. Okay. Like right. I'm, a, I'm the type of person who will put 90% of my mind into 10% of things, right. and 10% of my mind to the other 90% right, of right, things. Right, right, right. And like I find it really ha- tough to work in situations mm. where I have to work with other people where yeah. everyone's not 100% in, mm. because it's really frustrating. Like, yeah. And I'm sure you'd understand, like yeah. working in a team environment now. Exactly. Yeah. Because when you're like, you know, you're like, you know, let's do this, let's do this, blah 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 mm. blah, and then the other guy is like, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, they come. Yeah, it, it just crushes you as well. Yeah, like, uh, at the point, it gets really tiring. Mm. And then, like, I think when we were playing in the band, we kept it going for quite a while. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think for me, I think at that point, I was like, I was definitely starting to see because because there was this there's this truth where you know, you get the results is based on how many hours you put into it. Right. right. And I was like, as much as I was trying to be a good guitarist. There were other people who were putting like six hours of work, right. and they just started playing, you know, a couple of months back, and they're skyrocketing, right? right. And then I think that's one thing that discourages me the most because of the situation that I was living in with my parents and you know, the family, constantly people saying. I remember when I did quit engineering, I was taken for counselling and stuff like that. So, yeah, you told me. Um, so because of those things, I was like, okay, you know what? I can't spend two hours a day even practicing. Right. Um, but if you want to make it, now I realise because. I've been doing photography and you know looking at kind of theme and right. you need to put a lot of time. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and that's something that you constantly did. I like remember your aunt is like we're complaining about you practicing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your scales. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and the, I mean the funny thing is like looking back on it now it's funny but like at that point because like I said I lot I start quite mm, late in music now right. like and like maybe i picked up the guitar and i was like 16 or 17 right. or something yeah. and i was really bad bro like right. guitar and singing right, right. i was quite shit and i yeah. still remember like sometimes i'd be like practicing songs and stuff at home at mm. my aunt's place yeah and like my random my aunt would like put her head in the door and be like this is sound that good <laughs> <laughs> oh wow was so soul crushing at that point man yeah. i think your aunt had a tactic to discourage you probably from. probably, probably, probably. <laughs> i mean yeah bless her oh wow But, she was a very nice i remember um, I think the first day I think this happens to every family um the first day you bring a new friend home they try and you know gauge where you are on the spectrum are you full into music right, or right, are you right, right. are you do you is this a hobby mm-hmm. and I think she got the vibe from me thinking that okay I'm in the middle mm-hmm. and I think she uh, she was trying to convince me that I I should also keep um uh, engineering stuff not engineering I was my business degree I was right, the same right, thing right, at right. that 
Because the, this has happened to my friends as well when they've come oh, over. That, that my, sense, my parents have definitely done this, uh, trying to, because it's a tactic, right? They're trying to get you through your friends. Uh, oh, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, interesting. I mean, I'd love to meet you, Aunt again. I mean, like, bless her heart, I, I'm yeah, sure she had the best of intentions. Exactly. She was such a nice person, I mean, uh, to tolerate. I remember you doing those damn scares. Yeah. <laughs> <She> was, uh, <laughs> it wasn't pleasant sounding, but I'm sure it was. <laughs> Oh, it was hilarious. But yeah, I mean, like intentions were good there, but uh, in a way, I think it kind of slowed my progress yeah. a bit, also because it gave me this like more mm. lack of confidence at that yeah, point yeah, because yeah, I was yeah. like, shit, I'm starting quite late and yeah. I'm not that great now. Exactly. Yeah. And then when I hear mm. stuff like that from yeah, yeah. my aunt or like, yeah. people around, exactly, then you feel a bit discouraged. Mm. But Luckily for me, I didn't give up. I was like, exactly, no, yeah. no, fuck it. Like, you were, I was one of the weak ones. I just, uh, <laughs> I was like, fuck this. Because <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't want to throw shade to our parents or you know the people who are. Because mm. everything comes. I mean, they are educated at that point to learn what reality is. Exactly, exactly. And we were a little. I think I was overestimating what actually the reality is, you know. Right. And they were just trying to show it to us. So I don't want to throw any shade. But we are seeing, you know, some of the people or peers who actually stuck onto it and, you know, had a little bit more support. Like, we see where they are right now. Getting results, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. With, And um, also, bro, I think I'm, I'm starting to realize this now. Mm. Our parents had, like, much harder lives than we did. Like, True. we will never understand, like, how hard True. it yeah. was, like, you know, with exactly. the war and, like, exactly. the July yeah. riots and all that shit. Yeah. We don't even know because most of our parents don't even talk about this right, stuff. No? Right, yeah, so I'm sure true. when that's they true. were young, mm. thinking about being a musician or an artist would mm. have been like, are you mad? Yeah. You need exactly. to pay your bills and eat mm. and feed your family. That would have been the main thought. Yeah. So it's, it's very unfair for us to exactly, yeah. expect them to yeah. understand a different way of living. Exactly, yeah. which is why you know, I said I'm in Norse because I'm living a pretty comfortable life right now yeah. because of yeah. all the hard work. Um, and I am a spoiled kid right. because of all I like to kind of you know try and tell it to everybody because I can because I because I have this relationship with my parents it's a very open relationship and when I go out it seems like I'm throwing a lot of shit to my parents but right, actually right. I'm not very grateful so I keep telling you but I'm, I'm a spoiled kid right. but but yeah but I but definitely it's just it's like steel stereotypes are there for a reason right yeah. like when we uh, which is another topic I really want to get into, you know, because we have long hair and all Like we have stuff. about five minutes left though. Oh shit, shit. Okay, can I pay you a little bit more and keep you? <laughs> I'll take I, it. I'll, I'll take send, it. send me your invoice, Matsai. No worries. But, uh, so now you're a solo artist, right? You know, yeah. you I see you and I'm still, I admire the resilience that you have to keep at it because I, I freaking gave up as soon as, uh, uh, my mom calling me. I, so, I gave up as soon as, Things got hard. Like right, even, right, uh, right. what's it like playing music in Sri Lanka as a solo artist? Like, um, it's great. It's great. Right. It's not great. Right. It's joyful sometimes. Mm. It's fucking depressing sometimes. Right. Uh, but like, I mean, uh, so the first four years of my solo career. Mm. Actually, I, do, I should do this. Like my solo career. <laughs> yeah. You know what Ravin did the other day. So my wife, <laughs> oh, shit, that's, that's <laughs> she was idea. sitting right there. Suddenly he was sitting right there. Sorry, All musicians, it's a musician oh, thing, man. I think. But yeah, carry on. I'm sorry. But yeah, like, so the first yeah. stages of my first four, five years of career, it was playing in mm. pubs, like basically being a cow, cow artist. Okay. Yeah, like I was a working musician, right? right? Yeah. Um, but so over the last three ish years is when I've started writing my own music mm. because that was the other stepping stone. Like okay. imagine if it was hard for me to be convince myself I was a musician, mm. it was even harder to convince myself that I was an artist who can make my yeah, own music. Yeah, 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 that was yeah. like another track to jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then after after I started writing my own music and uh, releasing my own music, mm. then the feeling of fulfillment become, became like tenfold more. Right. Like, mm. like I, I, I have fun. I still have fun playing covers at a pub for work and stuff. Yeah. But the author I get from releasing mm. a song and staring at that YouTube page and refreshing yeah. and looking at the views is like a thousand yeah, times. Yeah, Because uh, you and I have written songs here and there. You know, made last yeah, time, yeah, yeah. That was your full, fully fledged. You know, you writing music lyrics. Because I remember seeing that and I was, I was. It was a pretty emotional. 
a song because I don't know because I personally maybe knew you and I I kind of cuz there are a lot of stories in that song. Uh, you mean my first song? Yeah, your first song. Matak Maru. Yeah, exactly. And I Is this the point where you like played in the edit and stuff like no no no, no it's not that like kind of like a hey no, no, no. i'll link it in the description oh, that, bro. <laughs> can't you like cut to like a nice clip from the video and like you know <laughs> try to compliment the back <laughs> not happening and then cut the your face just going yeah, like, like <laughs> oh <laughs> so good but yeah that was like the question that i was trying to ask you like okay that was a <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was the uh, that was the first full song. What does it take for an artist to release a song in Sri Lanka? So a lot, because I know uh, bands in terms of uh, from like logistics to finding the right people, like that's how- the logistical side, not the creative process. No, no, not the creative process. Logistical. Process, yeah. Um. Well, for me, with the first two songs, I was really lucky because I actually got to work with Ravin. Okay. Ravin Ratnam. Right. On those two songs. Yeah. So basically, the shout out to Ravin. Yeah, yeah. Podcast number eight. <laughs> nine, nine, nine. I'm sorry. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> we take that out. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, like yeah. the first two songs, basically I wrote the song, the me- lyrics, the melody, the chord works, the arrangements yeah. and stuff, and so basically the work process with Ravin was. he produced the song like he okay. did actually he did all the instruments and stuff oh, okay. the guitars the bass the drums right, right. so it, it was like a package deal right and i yeah. just had to come and sing my part oh okay interesting and like he just played the parts that right. i wrote with his own touch to it right uh so in that sense it was easy like uh, since my third song which i released mm. a few months ago mm. uh so for that i actually did the kind of the production myself mm. like i played the guitars and i got friends to play the other instruments right, and right, stuff right, right, right. uh to be honest it's i've been really blessed because i've had friends who come and help mm. me out like this like, like for example we are for my last song mm. like uh, uh, i had uh, sarni perera vindu perera oh, okay. and divanka right. playing the instruments so i was lucky like there was just like one phone call right, away right, and i was right, like bro right. can can you play for my song and they were like yeah right, right, okay. okay how important is it to have a music video when you're releasing a song uh pretty important i think mm-hmm. like uh Again, I I do I don't I can't be sure of this, right. but I feel like especially when you're a new artist, mm-hmm. it helps a video to get grab people's attention. Right. Because I I know for a fact that when I see a new artist release a song, yeah, looking for the video. not that I'm looking for the video, but if I just see an audio release, seven out of ten times I'll just scroll past it. Right. right And when right. I see the third release only, I'll be like, ah, oh, okay. Right. Right. Maybe right. it's something that I haven't seen. But the first time, if there's a video, the chances of me going and checking it out is a bit higher. Right. And I feel like a lot of people. Yeah, probably, I mean. Yeah, because uh, I don't know. Because uh, I, I just feel like people, like the human race has become very visual. Uh, I think because of social media. Right, right, right. right. Because yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when they when they're on that on those platforms, it's as opposed different. to like listening to Spotify or something yes, like yes. that. Right? Yeah, that's true. Um, is Spotify and, I, and iTunes the thing for? artist solo artist yeah it is oh, yeah. i mean we don't make a lot of money mm. i don't make a lot of sorry i i don't make a lot of money at the moment right. because i don't have okay that level of plays yet right but i know like uh, other artists in sri lanka right. like they make quite a decent amount of that stuff as well okay so where would you like okay any solo artist that's starting out and whether how would they cuz i know that this is has, this has been a very difficult um uh characteristics to me to be not only in the music industry but also in general with my photography and stuff how do you ask for money as a musician like when you let's say how do you right, price right, right, yourself right um yeah is, is me, my question how do you put a value to your so cuz right. i struggle even with photography when they come in yeah, especially cuz it comes with through networks right people you know right. who know somebody and then there's like a right of a connection there how do you tackle that So, so I think um, a big part of that for me was um, putting enough enough work and practice mm. into my craft. Okay. Where at a point I felt like okay, it's I'm mm-hmm. giving something to someone that's worth this much. Right. Like where you feel like confident to be like mm. hey, you know, I've put in this many hours. Right. 
I I should charge now. Okay. Because sort of a long time while I was like you know trying to mm. work on my skills and improve myself, I kind of had the doubt like I was like shit. Yeah. You know, Am I like calling people in to like right. swing and playing songs and charging? Yeah, because that does exist, right? That's because you and I we come and meet so many people maybe in your industry and me in the photography industry. They charge an insane amount, mm. and then they it's like a one-time purchase for all of them, right? They mm. just find a client, charge them, the client never calls them back. Right. But then we get flabbergasted as how much they charge, right? Yeah, we are like yeah. we are doubting ourselves. Um, right. Have you ever had a have ever had a point where you thought that you asked too little? Um no to be honest mm. no because mm. uh, like luckily i had friends who were doing this right. so i had a network where i could go and ask you know, how much do you think i should charge right. when i was starting mm. to work as a musician yeah. and uh, like i stuck to that mm. okay. like if for example if it was x amount of rupees mm. i i had this thought where i was like you know hey like you know mm. you pay me this amount i'll do my best to give you something that's worth right. this amount right If that doesn't work between us, it's fine. Okay. So I kind of stuck with that, yeah. and like it feels good to like you know mm. value yourself in that way also. And I feel like it's kind of a motivator for you to keep improving also, mm. because like I couldn't charge a lot of money and not practice for like yeah. a month. Yeah, right, 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 right. yeah. Like you know, like exactly. I'll feel like shit. I'll be like I'm conning yeah. people, you know. Right. So there's that aspect to it also. Okay. Do you ever think you'll be a part of a band again? Hmm. Why you want to play guitar again? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, Next question. Okay. Uh, well, to be honest, like I do miss playing with other people, like mm-hmm. because it it can get a bit boring, much I'm playing yeah. solo. Yeah. Like especially when you're like sometimes I'll be playing in like Mahatra or somewhere, mm. and there'll be like. 200 300 people right. among friends are drinking yeah. and having fun I'll feel so alone right. on stage right, right, some right. points in the night yeah. I look around and there's no one to like vibe off right. or even yeah. and I'm, you know so it does get pretty lonely mm-hmm. from a human point and a musician point right, right, right. so I kind of miss playing with other people okay. but I know the headache of starting a band in Sri Lanka with the But I don't know how it is now actually because mm. now I see a lot of young people coming up who are like properly into the music scene right. and are hard workers yeah, and blah yeah, blah yeah. blah. Yeah. So maybe now it's different. But yeah. my goal now is to progress as a solo artist yeah. and kind of put my put a band together for myself. Right. Yeah, when you say head headache, it's not just like a couple of you were at it for like easily five six years, right? Trying to make a band work yeah, yeah. back then when it's like maybe like. Ten different bandmates. Exactly. exactly. Uh, okay. So I, I yeah I would like to have a band. Right. But maybe like you know get to a point where you know how like uh, guys like John may have their band. Mm. Where it's a band, it's a fully functioning band, but it's right. his band. Right, right, right. Kind right, of right. thing. Yeah. Because I feel like I would find it easier to work in that context. Mm. Yeah. Where I can kind of call the shots. Right, right, right. And if you're playing with me, mm. where I'm already at a point, yeah, like right. I want to get to a point where I'm a. Recognize artists right, where I can be right. like, hey, you know, come here. I need you to play this stuff. I need yeah. you to play this stuff. Yeah. Play it again. Interesting. So, how many annual leaves a year does a musician get? Right now, like three hundred sixty days. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, let me ask you a different question. How is uh, who covers the insurance? Medical insurance. <laughs> my insurance is covered by my nation's trust <laughs> <laughs> personal account. <laughs> yeah, because because I mean that's something that. Um, I think because I joined a company, I took for granted, right? Because I saw Ravi actually post this, you know, like a musician uh, doesn't get time off because you, because holiday, Christmas, New Year's is one uh, of the busiest, well, please, yeah, yeah. busiest nights. Uh, have, how does how's that experience like? I mean, to be to be honest, bro, I enjoyed like okay, mm. the last two years have been a bit tough for us. Uh, I mean, for me personally, right. for my experience, it has yeah. been a bit tough with work because work has been far less for us. Right, right, right. First last year with the Easter attacks and mm. this year with Corona and stuff. Yeah. But the year before, I was working a lot. Like I was playing about a good five, six gigs a week. Right. Like mostly down south and mm. stuff. Right. And like I was tired, man. Like you know, I'd go down mm. south on like Tuesday, come back on a Sunday, right. and do it week in week out for like a few months. Uh, I was exhausted, but I was happy because I was mm. just happy to be doing. Like that's the thing. Like it's 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 work, but it's not yeah. work. Also, like yeah. every time I get on stage, I get a pretty rush yeah. and a, like a bit of a high. Yeah. 
So it's nice. Like yeah, I think I think that's something that I miss so much. Like when I see you guys uh, playing, I'm like even now I think in the last year uh, Facebook was you know a couple of months of showing us all the shit that we used to do together, the band oh, videos right, and all right. that. And it's something like I keep saying, okay, you know what? If I just stuck on maybe uh, and the rig, because it is a special kind of high, right? When you're it as is, opposed it is. to just like nothing compared, bro. Exactly, yeah. And, and uh, like we've tasted like the tiniest level exactly. of exactly. Imagine like, the buggers who play for like sixty thousand people, man. Amazing. That must be like a. Yeah. Coke shot up the butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. freaking, freaking crazy. Okay, let's. Uh, it's another topic that I want to. I think this is. A, I'm gonna end it by this, so you won't overcharge me. But uh, okay. long hair, right? You know, like because I know I've had plenty of experiences uh, with growing my hair out. You know, do do you have any uh, weird experiences with you growing your hair out? Oh, uh, not really. Like it started kind of towards the end in school. Okay. Because I had like, uh, I, like I said that our headmaster who wanted us to get right. come to school early. Yeah. This bugger was like a anal dude when right. it came to like appearances and right, like right, all right. the superficial yeah. bullshit, right? Yeah. And then uh, so I, I still remember like I used to start growing my beard started growing in pretty early. Lucky like maybe, maybe like yeah, I, like still I, patchy. <laughs> 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 Nothing coming out probably. <laughs> yeah, so I remember in school like uh, so they started coming in around like sixteen, seventeen maybe. Right. And then I I hated shaving myself because mm. you get that like itchy baby face right, feeling right, and right, like right, your right. face feels puffy. Right. And I I felt like I was like forty percent less dude to shave. Right. So I was like fuck, I don't want to shave. Like I started trimming. Right. And this bug is like nah nah like you know beard dig like mini meter to under idiot in the bed. Nah. Like this stuff. Like that oh level of God, like hair. Like, like, like I remember once he actually made me leave class, go to a shop, buy a razor, and come and shave. I already had the Malakada razor that people that the prefects no, 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 threatened no. you with. Ah oh, no, I wouldn't tell them that. I mean they don't actually do it. Oh right. But they keep our way well at the end of the day. Right right. right. Uh, Tetanus had a big hill by it. Right, right, right. So they just scare you with it. Fuck that, I would have been a problem. <laughs> 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 but he actually made me go and buy a razor and shave. Right, right. But then I was like, fuck, you know, why? How can another person fucking control me like this? Exactly, yeah. So then what I did was I got a letter from home uh, saying that I get face rashes when I shave. Nah. No. I was the vice principal and I was like, sir, so, listen, I can't shave now, I can't right. trim. Right, right, right. right. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to do. Were you like in your face? Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, mama, I'm going to go to the class and I'm going to go to the class. Fuck. So what about your tattoos? Because I know you have, uh, you're quite a number of tattoos. A few, yeah. Um, so this is the... I think I it got. started with your grandfather's. Yes. Uh, yeah, actually. Song. That's yeah. That's the weird thing, man. Like I got this. Um, oh, that's the one, right? This one. Is that, okay. That was yeah. the first. Right, right, right. You are so, my sunshine, right? No, no, no. That's here. Okay. Yeah. That was also a grand. For my granddad, this kind okay. of. But this right. I actually got like. Uh, so it's it's a it's a passage from one of my favorite books, and it says, uh, "Let us be separated by wars and pestilence, death, madness, but not by the not." Uh, With the passing of time, right? And I got my like parents' birth dates and stuff. In, right. What was your um, intentions behind tattoos? Because I know I got my first tattoo, and you're the first one who came. So I, because uh, I was oh, going, shit, is, yeah, because yeah, I was yeah. going through like my stupid shit back. Leave me that out. Leave me that out. But yeah, I think you're the first. I because I got the tattoo, I came straight for practice. Um, so you got a tattoo before me, then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. This tiny thing, which I really right. love. I still right, love right. it. Since yeah. I'm so freaking afraid, afraid to get more tattoos because it hurt like shit. Did I you? Remember, yeah, I remember getting this, and I was like almost passing out. I literally Shitty. had to think about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, I'm a small kid. What can I do? But no, man. Like I love the feeling of getting tattoos. Ah, really? It's like, Okay, I have one here which I don't think I should show now. Yeah, so but I mean, uh, this kind of hurt a bit. Right. Because it was long, like it was. Rib, and I'm a bit tickly also, going, so I'm a bit sensitive. Here. It's going over ribs as well. Yeah, like it, like I can show it, like. Oh up shit! Nice. Let me suck the stuff. So I will Instagram picture. Yeah. Have you got it on Instagram for me? Ah uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Like yes. super cut it in. I shall. Yes. Super cut it in so that it's uh, <laughs> family friendly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. There's no nip slip like right, right. stuff. Okay, actually, yeah. yeah. But this hurt a bit, but like the like this and stuff. Like I really What like the, the feeling. Nick? Didn't this hurt? No, this hurt the least, I think. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, because okay. when you think about it, this skin isn't that sensitive, Mason. Interesting. I thought because yeah. when only when there's a muscle, it doesn't hurt underneath. Yeah, the method it's just like. I guess. So what is the why? Why you 
did you want to get tattoos? Like, um, what was the artistry or the intentions behind that? I just like mm-hmm. the feeling of expressing the mm. vibe or right. uh, yeah, vibe. Mm. And even this is a form of art, right? Right, right. Which right, I really right. like. Yeah. There's no like deep right. thought process who, behind it. Who are the tattoo artists that you would recommend? Uh, so all my stuff has been done by Dimo, Dimo okay. Fernando. Yeah, yeah, he's really hard to catch because he uh, flies in and out of the country a lot. Yeah, the last couple of years he's been flying in and out. Right. But yeah, so all this stuff was done by him. Okay. And I have one on the back of my neck, which is like monk in Thailand did. Right, right, right. That's the. I remember seeing, maybe a couple of years after, you know, you went solo. There was this post about you, you know, sharing on Facebook and being the social media activist <laughs> about veganism. Where did when did that? start and why is that important um so there there were a few influences for that uh, also like uh, for the sake of full disclosure i'm not completely vegan right now because oh, i okay. had a small uh, vitamin d right, right, right. deficiency yeah. So, yeah. i've been eating eggs right. on and off because but i keep because of a requirement i guess yeah you... because no i ca- i cannot eat eggs but i keep forgetting to take my supplements man right, right. because i'm 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 very bad when it comes to my uh, personal mm, okay T- taking care of myself. <laughs> yeah, okay. like I'll remember the supplement when I open the fridge and see the supplement, <laughs> and I'll be like, "Oh fuck, got to And then I don't think you can take three and yeah. then like balance yeah. it out. So I've been eating mm. eggs now and then. Right. But anyway, so what triggered that day so when that, you got up and you like? Uh, so that actually started much on a few things, a couple of weird things, right? Mm. Like so, at that point, I was dating this girl who who was a vegan for a while. Okay. At that point, it's always and, a girl. I mean, it was a, such a good thing, man, right. because like. I I used to go out and eat with her, and I used to like. Uh, after a point, I was like, I started feeling a bit weird, like you know, I'm eating this meat, and you're just like eating veggies. Uh, so I started uh, asking, like you know, okay. more and more yeah. why, and then I started learning about mm. the stuff I had no idea about, like for example, like how bad farms are, and like how shit the animals' lives are and stuff. How and I was like, wow, like yeah. I've been so blank to that. Right. Because when you think about it, we just think that our steak comes and just lands on our plate. No, mm. we don't see the whole story yeah. behind it. Yeah. And during that time, there was this um, like some weird astrology thing that my mom had gone to check something for my astrology right. and that do something like that. What did you say? Kendra. Right, right, right. Okay. So that bug had said, uh, ask him to go veggie once, once a week. Okay. I think he, I think he specified the date also. Saturday, Harim got right. He had said Karla ban. So this, yeah. both of these things happened a bit simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was like, okay, fine, I'll try it. Right. And since after I did it for a few weeks, I was like, wow, like I, do, I don't really feel mm. attached to it now. Right. And at the same time, I was, I was learning about the backstory behind meat and dairy. Right, 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 right. Also, and then like within a couple of months, I think I gave it up. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember my last meat meal was in Dubai, where I had uh, Nando's chicken because I've never had it before. Right. right. How, like, many, okay. how many years ago? Fuck. Maybe four, five years ago. Right. I mean, apart, apart from the um, the whole animal cruelty thing, like, because I know I'm at a, I mean, I feel like an, an ass for saying this, but I'm at an age because I'm not old, but I'm 29, right. and I know like when I eat a burger, I feel it the next day. Right, right. You know, it likes to eat like that, it, it doing something that's not that great right. inside. You know, so I've, I've also you know slowly reduced. Uh, Eating and just you know eating not completely, right? Because uh, I need the meat, right? Uh, on and off. How how has has that affect your health? Man, I uh, feel great since right. I started. Like, like you said, man, you feel much lighter, right? After you eat a veggie meal, mm. like even if you pig out probably on a probably on a veggie right. meal, right? Like you don't feel as heavy. But I remember like the feeling of like properly pigging out at a yeah. buffet on like some meats and yeah. shit, and you feel like. Do you miss it? Uh, Or did you miss I, it when you switched? Or to be honest, I miss that. Uh, I used to miss that feeling of heartiness, right? And some taste, certain right, taste. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But now, but I like I don't really remember it all so much now. Mm-hmm. So I don't really miss it now. And like now, there are more and more stuff coming up that's like quite accurate right, 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 when it right. comes to like replicating the real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever tried any of this? Yeah, I've tried this thing called Beyond Burger when I was in Aussie. Oh, okay. And like my friend got I've it. I've heard of this. Is yeah, it actually it's next level, bro? Like I was like I was literally I was like asked my friend, right. are you sure? Like right, are you right, like right. you know messing with me and giving me some meat? Right. Like it's that accurate. 
interesting because so it's becoming easier and easier also like right, right, right. because i remember listening to this uh, there's this really cool podcast called uh, the i waves podcast that too <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but anyway they interview the young meet uh, ceo okay and they ask him like you know what's your mission and vision blah, blah, blah. and he says like one thing he said that really made a lot of sense to me is like the moral argument isn't the best way forward when it comes to getting people to eat more consciously and stuff okay because like not everyone cares about that right. stuff right and he mm. said the best way to approach it and the best the best way he thinks mm. he can make a difference in this space is to give people something that tastes exactly the same right. as meat and costs exactly the same yeah because when you think about it if, mm. if you have that option yeah mm. then if you still say no you meet need meat then you're just a dick yeah Like exactly. Know, if it tastes exactly the same, yeah. you're like, no, no, I want to kill that animal. Yeah, because it's killer. You have a point, because I know all the shit that animals go through, right? And in my head, I'm like, you know, I want to stop. Right. But I can't. Right, right. Because I don't have the substitute for it. You right, know, like, right. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to, but it's really difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, because my moral compass is not that strong, I guess. I don't know. No, fair enough. Um, yeah. so that's pretty, pretty amazing. I'm Lanka, you know, though. There is one place person in Valloth called the the VOB cafe they bring okay. it down once in a while oh, yeah. because I think it's pretty expensive to get yeah. down in like con- small quantities okay. like that but yeah. I'm hoping like soon if some of the big chains start yeah bring it it'll be pretty kick ass man interesting anyway thanks a lot man for no it's good thanks for having me it's actually uh, nice to it feels like a part of our life coming full circle like you know starting yeah. to play the band together and now we're here doing this I mean trying to get back in the band again here you know, <laughs> you know, you know, so try to actually have to go right. <laughs> send me invoice <laughs> 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 sure we could do it